the longest day of my life. I don't, I don't know if it matters, but you can't fake it until you make it. You actually have to pay your dues and it shows. So I panicked, <laughs> I, uh, naturally. Game day, interview day comes. What I found uh, when I was preparing for the virtual on-site interview was that there wasn't much content talking about the virtual version of the on-site interview at Google, so I didn't really know what to expect. However, going through it afterwards, now I think back, it was a lot easier logistically compared to if you were going to an actual on-site interview on a physical campus because I had a horrible, horrible personal experience. Years and years ago when I was freshly graduated from college, I had an interview at Apple in San Jose and the night before my interview, I had a stomach flu. So I ended up spending my whole night in the bathroom, didn't get any sleep and I went to the interview. It was a, the longest day of my life, I can remember. It was five or six interviews, one after another, each was an hour long. And even during lunch, you're accompanied with an engineer. So technically you're not on the clock for an interview, but you, you still gotta be talking and not much eating was going on. So I nearly passed out towards the end of the day. And just so happened the, the <laughs> My last interview was with a very higher up management person and I could not even concentrate on what he was talking about. Compared to that, the virtual on-site interview was much easier. Sit down where you always sit down and be very comfortable with your environment. There's no stress of finding the conference room. So what I did, I would recommend to anybody is that take a melatonin the night before because if you were like me, your brain will not let you sleep the night before. It will go through a hundred different scenarios of what's gonna happen the next day and how I would fail miserably in every single one of them. So screw all that. I just took a melatonin, had a good night's sleep and woke up and ready for the interview at my own desk. And then another thing is prepare a second Bluetooth headphones and then prepare a third wired headphone. Prepare some drinks and some chocolates for energy boost and pen and paper. And prepare an extra screen because you have to use one screen for the video chat portion of the interview. It's actually helpful to have another one to, to open up the Google Doc. Find a place that is quiet, comfortable, and well lit. It's to make a good first impression. And I have also read, make sure the, the backdrop is not cluttered. I don't, I don't know if it matters, but. So for me, my five interviews started at 10 and each of them was 45 minutes and I had an hour lunch break. So everything, all the subject was Except for the Googleiness and leadership, everything else was tackling one problem during that 45 minutes. So you will have ample time to answer. Most of the uh, interview was to, to see your thought process. The first one I had was the Googleiness and leadership. It was actually the easiest one, and I'm glad I knocked it out of the park first thing in the morning. So the questions were all hypothetical, and you're supposed to answer with examples from the past experience to illustrate how you would behave in certain scenarios. For example, this is not the actual question at all because everybody has to sign the NDA, but it's very generic. It's very common with uh, interviews at other companies too. So for example, if you had a coworker who disagrees with you on your proposed solution, what did you do if you had that experience or what would you do if you haven't had a, that experience to resolve that conflict? And then the second one I had was the non-abstract large scale system design. It was also a hypothetical question. Um, so it started small. So it started with something very easy, straightforward to answer. And the interviewer will expand upon that. Sometimes it's based on your answer because it could, it can be open-ended. Sometimes it dig down into part of your answer. You and the interviewer are together to solve this problem and to design this uh, large scale system together. 
and to come up with the number, to come up with the cost. So that's the goal. So don't think of it as a quiz. Think of it as a your job. Figure this out with your coworker. So for example, if you were to design a web server and then it would expand on the scenarios based on your answer and then you would have to come up with the detailed numbers uh, metrics to narrow down the design. This is very much a interviewee-led process. And then the third one I had was Linux and Unix. So I started with a very basic question again, and then we explored upon my answers. The problem with this interview that when I went through was my interviewer happened to be an expert in networking and security, which is my weakest link. In, in all of stuff, all of my subjects. So my area of expertise is barely ever have to touch anything in in that space. Just learning a few things from my pre preparation process did not gain me much. <laughs> And it definitely showed my shortcomings in that area. So again, this is one of the two interviews that I think you can't fake it until you make it. You actually have to pay your dues and it shows. <laughs> And then the third one was coding. It wasn't easy at, for this for this interview because my interviewer wasn't much of a talker, so he just showed me the question on the Google Doc. So I panicked, <laughs> I uh, naturally, and then I started coding without even thinking it through. I was just going blindly, hoping there is an answer in the end, and it did not work out and because I didn't solve the question. I ended up having extra time, and I was actually probing to ask how the interviewer would solve the problem, and he wasn't at liberty to tell me. So anyways, <laughs> oh well. And then the last one was troubleshooting. You pretend you're solving a problem with your peer. So for example, if you would observe a latency issue with your system, there could be a million different things that went wrong. But you want to lead through your thought process and show it to your interviewer that you're thinking, like narrow it down, components. Is it networking? Is it storage? Is it compute? Is it like, where is it bottlenecked? Is it hardware? Is it software? And how you would go down each route to figure out the root cost. And very much similar to your day-to-day -day job if you are a system engineer already. So yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't too big of a shocker to me. So yeah, that was all five interviews. So I waited about three weeks and my recruiter called and said um, they would like a second round interview. So we scheduled it about two weeks out because I kind of just want to get it over with. Um. So my second round of interview was two subjects. One was the Linux internals. The other subject was coding. Obviously, I, I bombed the first one, so that wasn't a shocker. So yeah, my second round came much easier because instead of preparing for five subjects, you just have to focus on two. So the outcome, obviously I failed miserably, and that's why I'm here making a video, trying to be a YouTube star and making millions. I'm kidding. Um, I did get an offer, but I didn't go through the team matching process. So for Google, the philosophy is to hire for the company if you're considered qualified, and they will go through a team matching process where you would find the positions that you'll be interested in and also for the team to find your personality fits the best with their dynamics. So I actually didn't go through that because I ended up turning down the offer. So here's what I considered when I was making my decision on whether to take this job or not. The pros, one of the most important one for me was I really like that the fact that Google has the motto of don't be evil because I mean, it sounds cliche and stupid, but I think it's such harsh world that I, I'd rather be a force of good than the alternative. So just to think that I'm making even an insignificant amount of difference to do good things, I would really enjoy that. Second of all, for me, my top priority is work-life balance. I have read a lot of posts on blind. From what I can tell, Google is one of the best ones out of all the thing. So that's definitely a plus for me. And then the third, obviously is the on-site campus perks. I had the opportunity to actually go on-site to go on the Google Cloud San Jose campus 
for some trainings several times. That was a dream campus to be working on. They had four restaurants and breakfast had a carving station. It's just all you can eat. Everything you can think of, it's there and it's all free. So yeah, that was definitely an amazing experience. So I turned down the offer and here are the reasons. So the closest campus to me is 50 minutes away and that's a long commute for somebody like me who has a family who has small children and I have actually done a hour-long commute um, during, for my internship in college and that was not pleasant and you, your quality of life significantly dropped if you have to spend over two hours on the road every day. It's just not an option for me. Second reason was again, work-life balance. And it's very much personal because at this stage of my life, my top priority isn't work necessary. I value other priorities more than work itself. I think there's more to life than just work. To me, it, it's a big risk because even though the company culture itself has a good work-life balance culture, but you still don't know with individual teams. You can be joining a team who thinks working 80 hours a week is a norm and you're competing with the youths who can work nonstop at night on the weekends and I cannot. <laughs> So, so yeah, that was a big risk. Lastly, like I said, I wasn't looking and I actually really do enjoy my current job and I really enjoy working with the people that I'm working with. Bottom line is the offer is good for a year so I can call her or contact her anytime during the year if I change my mind. If I ever do that, I, ha I will have to go through the team matching. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's the end of my story. So... I hope my story helped somebody out there who is looking for a job or who is going through the interview process and if I can go through it, <laughs> you can too. It's, it's really a very unique experience for me. That's why I'm here to share this with you and hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more of engineering related, career related videos, please subscribe. And I am Iris the Virus and I uh, will see you next time.